Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and it is time to unbox this month's scroller box. I have been waiting forever for this. I got the shipping confirmation over a week ago and I don't know what's going on with these boxes but they seem to be taking an awfully long time to reach people. The box has got kind of like a bulge here in the middle and it seems quite solid so I'm quite curious as to what's inside. So scroller box is the UK's only monthly subscription art box and they've been on, a, on the go for quite a long time now and they've really upped their game recently and the contents of the boxes have been awesome so we're just going to get stuck in and see what's inside there are a few items that we get every month and i'll just describe them as we go along so what we've got here is the scroller zine so this is like a little mini magazine it tells you about the supplies it tells you about the featured artist and there's usually a few other bits and pieces in it as well so speaking of our featured artist, here we go. And uh, <laughs> this says Posca, so I'm assuming it's Posca pens we're getting. This is a lovely design, it's really, really fun. I love this style of artwork because it's so different to what I would do, so this uh, this really tickles me. So the featured artist is SP0, is an illustrator and street artist based in Bristol in the UK. So you can see there, that's obviously their tag and that lends itself to street art style. So this is, this is really nice and that would look amazing on the side of a building. So you can read a little bit about them there and also links to social media down the bottom as well. We usually get a surface to work on and in this case it is an A5 marker sketch pad. So not being a fan of markers, I'm usually like, oh, it's markers. Clearly it's Posca pens. I love Posca pens. They're great. They are paint pens and they're absolutely oodles of fun. So this is paper by Art Gecko. I actually own an Art Gecko sketchbook and it's a black sketchbook, so I'm quite familiar with the brand. Their sketchbooks are really good quality. The one I have is an A4 spiral bound and it's really, really sturdy and it's quite stylish as well. It's quite sleek and the paper in it is lovely. So um, I'm optimistic about the paper and this is smooth as a baby's backside, which is what you want for markers. There is a little flaw on this first page and it's actually like in the fibre of the paper. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera or not, it's just here. But that's not going to stop us if we're using Posca pens. The paper is really, really thick though. This is, you know, you get marker paper sometimes and it's super thin, but it's got like a bleed proof backing on it. This is thick paper. 250 GSM, so that's thick for a marker paper. And uh, that's just sort of testament to the quality of the paper. 10 sheets acid free. Perfect for Posca. All right, so we'll look at our scholar zine in just a wee minute. We'll uh, have a, a wee delve into our supplies first. So normally, along with the supplies, we get a sticker that matches. It's been matching the zine the last few times, and it does indeed, and it's rather nice, rather stylish. We also get a sweet every month, a drumstick rhubarb and custard. Well, I've never tried a rhubarb and custard one of these, but these are they're hard, but you start chewing them, and they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, vegan free from artificial colours as well. So again, for our vegan collective, you are safe to have a chew on that. We also get a list of the supplies as well and a bit of technical information about it. So again, we'll look at that in just a second. So let's see what we've got. We have a Faber-Castell Echo Pigment. I'm assuming this is a fine liner, a 0 0.6. It's quite a funny shaped barrel. It's got like an indent there. That must be for ergonomic comfort, I would imagine. That's quite a thick fine liner, you know, for a fine liner, a thick liner, I don't know. Faber-Castell pens, generally very reliable. Not a thing I use an awful lot, but they're usually waterproof once they're dry. Let's see what it says here. Pigmented ink, waterproof, maximum light fastness. So it has got light fast properties as well. So that's really good to know. That's handy if you're wanting to put your artwork displayed somewhere. The pencil, uh, a Mars Lumograph Black. I love these pencils. I absolutely love these pencils. And this is a 2B. These are great. They're, they're not the same as a graphite pencil, as the name suggests. They're black, so they're really, really dark. And I love the fact that they come in the normal pencil grades. So I'm really pleased with this because I'm going to add it to my pencil collection. Sad that I get excited about pencils. And uh, last but not least, a selection of Posca pens. Now, the first thing that strikes me about these is they are different sizes, which means they're going to have different nib sizes as well. So these big ones, so we've got three colours and they're rather attractive pastel shades. So we've got turqu turquoise, lilac and a sort of salmon colour. They call it coral pink. And these are the 5M bullet nibs. So that's like a 2mm-ish 
nib width so I'll show you them in just a second and then we've got these finer ones and these are more for details and highlights and things so the barrel is actually slimmer and these are a 3m so that's like like one millimeter give or take i'm assuming these are bullet tip ones as well yeah bullet tip as well that's excellent now all of these have like a ball i call it a ball bearing but it's usually a plastic ball now and that's to help you mix the paint so you give them a really good shake and these also need primed as well so i will uh, show you that in just a moment when we start testing out the supplies so let's take a little look at the scrawler zine and we can have a wee look at what's inside here. So the first page, they follow uh, the same format every month and we have here this first page that just sort of gives you an overview of the supplies. So it's talking about the three M's here, it says the fine nibs for detailed line work. And the bigger ones, it says great coverage, opaque colours that cover each other with ease. But it also says add water. Feeling adventurous? Try adding water to the ink for washed out effects. They are water soluble, they're water based paints. They're, they're, they act, they're actually really versatile but they're so vibrant and that's why I like them because it's different from the things that I'd normally use. And then is the sort of interview part with the featured artist and that's something I like to keep and sit and read with a cup of tea. But you can see some of his other artwork here which is just absolutely stunning. This is amazing this is like i love this i love this so some tips on the mediums if you've never used them before i'm quite familiar with posca so uh, it maybe wouldn't be so much of a learning experience for me but i might be able to pick up the odd tip that i didn't know about and here we have as well i love this page this is my favorite page in the like the entire zine and it's people's artwork from the previous scroller challenges and there's, I like them because there's something nice about seeing them on paper rather than looking at them on your screen. I really, really enjoy these and these are amazing and it just showcases how much talent there is in amongst the art community. It's just amazing. Absolutely fabulous. This one's my favourite. This one kind of reminds me of Red Dead Redemption for all you gamers out there. Okay, so then you've got this last page, Scrawler Extra. So this time we're talking about Street Art Origins. So that's to enhance your knowledge of the art and its history and then a little scroller update so they normally talk about uh, you know what's actually going on almost like behind the scenes with scroller box so I absolutely love that as well it's a really well put together concise but informative piece of literature and I don't feel it's like an extra that we've chucked in just for the sake of it in the box I really enjoy these so let's take a look at the supplies list and see if we can learn anything new so the 5m posca pens Perfect tools for all of your marker needs. The medium tip of the 5M is one of the most adaptable in the Posca range. Clear, precise line work, beautifully vibrant colour, making it extremely popular among artists and designers. Water-based pigment ink that is light, fast, water-resistant and dries permanent on absorbent media such as paper or card. Posca does work on almost any surface. You can use them on wood, metal, glass, plastic, textiles and more. These versatile paint markers provide highly opaque matte colour that can be layered, watered down and used for almost any multimedia project that you can think of. So there you go, now you know. The 3M, so that's the skinnier nib ones. The 3M pigment ink markers are ideal for precision and accuracy, obviously because they've got a smaller nib. They write on virtually any surface, there's no bleed through on paper. That is an interesting point to note and I have noticed that using them. I've never had them bleed through anything unless I've absolutely saturated the paper beyond all recognition. The light colours can easily be layered on top of dark colours. Now that's an interesting point. The white one of these, I have a 1M which is the weenie 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 nib and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and it's I quite often use it in place of like a white gel pen or a white pencil. The only thing I will say about that is you have to make sure it's really, really mixed. So you need to shake the living daylights out of your pen and make sure that it's flown properly before you use it on your artwork. But again, we'll look at that a bit more in just a minute. So it says, yeah, it makes the white pen perfect for both highlighting and correcting any mistakes. I don't often use it for that, to be fair. Precision bullet shaped nib gives the user amazing line control, allowing for intricate and detailed drawing, outlining, hatching and colouring. Good stuff. The pigment liner. This popular and reliable eco pigment fiber tip pen. I did say they are reliable. <laughs> Suitable for writing, drawing and sketching. Thanks to its special pigmented ink, it is also ideal for using on drawing paper and transparent paper. The pigmented ink is waterproof and light fast and the pen features an ergonomic grip. So did I not say that? Did I use the word ergonomic before? I'm not sure if I did. Uh, making for comfortable use and that's always helpful for people like me that have got weird hands. 
the Mars Lumograph pencil in the 2B, which I was strangely and probably a bit too excited about. Made for artists and designers. High percentage of carbon in the lead, so this pencil delivers deep, rich blacks. With a matte finish, this pencil is great for sketching, expressive marks and hatching. Also has a super bonded lead, which lends to a more break-resistant pencil. I think all of the Lumograph pencils have that, and I have to say I never have any problems with breakages. The Gecko Paper. Freestyle sketchbook made especially for the box. Unique hybrid paper combining bleed-proof marker paper and Bristol board. So perfect for perfect blend for marker pens and endorsed by Posca. So Posca are kind of like, yeah, use this paper. So that's good. The scrawler challenge is character creation. That's uh, quite interesting. And they always say to be interpreted however you wish. And I find sometimes that it's kind of like a tenuous link. But character creation, that that's pretty open. You know, you you can you can do a lot with that. So that's it. That's quite exciting. Quite excited about this. I'm always up for more Posca pens. I can never have too many Posca pens. This is my basket of Posca pens. <laughs> I may have some duplicates going on here. Um, I wanted to bring this over though just to show you the, the little white one I was talking about. So this is the 1M and if I just show it you next to the 3, it's really diddly and then next to the five so you can see there's quite a difference there this is the size of nib we're talking about so that's the one i use for like highlights and things so i just want to show you the different nib sizes i'm not going to open these because i might have some duplicates if there's any that i don't have i will open the the ones that have come in the box there's the there's the one m nib i'll probably be able to see it against the desk okay and there we've got a three m and then the five m so there's quite a difference in size between these nibs there you go, that's better. So you do have a lot of room to play about. You can vary the nib, the line width when you're actually using them just by tilting them slightly because they're a bullet tip. But they're a great range of pens, they're really reliable. And uh, yeah, I'm a fan, considering it's not a medium I would work in too often. I really like them, I really enjoy them. So I've had a wee break through my Posca collection and I already have the turquoise colour in a 5M and I've got the black and white in the 3M. So I'm not gonna open the new ones. And after this video goes live, I'll be putting them into the stash shop. If you want to grab a hold of them for much cheapness, you can head to the website. Here is the link and you can snatch them up for yourself. What I do want to do though is show you how to prime them and we'll test out the rest of the supplies also. So grab one of these and get the plastic off them first of all. So when these arrive, the nibs are white because there is no ink or paint, whichever you want to call it. So they arrive looking a little bit like this. And you can see that that's clean and dry. So we have to prime them. So the first thing you want to do is put the cap on them and give them a really good shake. So what this does is this lets the paint mix together because it can separate inside the barrel. And like I said before, if you if they're sort of lying for a wee while before you use them, it's a really good idea to give them a really good shake just to make sure it's mixed. Now these nibs depress, so they disappear into the barrel. And to prime them, you want to press down on a piece of paper and just keep going. And eventually you will see the ink start to flow down onto the nib and you'll see it change colour and then you're nearly ready to go. So there we go. If I stop there, you can see it's starting to come down now. So I'm just going to do the, the lilac one because this is another colour I don't have in the 5M size and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm starting with the pencil. So this is a 2B pencil and it's going to be quite soft, but I'm really curious to see what happens on this paper because you wouldn't normally opt for this, you know, this smoothness of paper. And if I'm just sort of build up some layers here to see what happens, you can actually achieve quite a, a, quite a dark value. And again, that's just because we're talking about the amount of carbon in the pencil. So, I mean, you're not going to use this for hefty shading or anything. It's not going to be that type of um, that type of paper to work on. But even if I press really hard once, you can still get a really nice dark line. So there you go. That's me like quite a heavy pressure. So the value is there if you want it. But in terms of using it for sketching, you know, if you're doing a rough outline, it's still, it's still capable of doing that if that's what, you know, that's what you were after. So let's move on to the fine liner then. I don't know how much this ergonomic barrel is going to help me, but this is a 06 and it is literally just gliding on the paper. That feels so nice. See that feeling? That's lovely. I like that. The ink flow seems to be quite consistent. It feels quite wet, but not too wet. You know, juicy is the word that people use, isn't it? And there's going to be no skipping or scratching. You know, if you're going really quickly, 
there's there's going to be no parts where the ink isn't flowing out fast enough so I actually quite like that it does feel a wee bit cheap I've got a thing about that but not terribly so and I think I would actually use this the line width for me is just a little bit too fat I like my fine liners fine but that's just down to preference that's obviously not a reflection of the product itself so if we move on to the Posca pens now the first thing I want to do is show you the three colours of the 5M markers because they are absolutely lovely. I like them a lot. And let's see how these feel going down. Oh my. Oh, that feels lovely. That is amazing. <laughs> It feels so good. And when these dry, if you're working on paper like this, you're going to get a really nice, even, flat colour. And that's one of the advantages of these pens over most alcohol markers and things. It's so easy to get a nice, smooth and very opaque base. Or, or subsequent layers for that matter. So we can see here, these are, these colours are just lovely. I like them a lot. I like them together as well that sort of pastel palette. So we'll leave them to dry. We'll see how long they take to dry. This one is drying already. I'm sure you can see some streaks. So that is drying. With the, uh, with the smaller, thinner markers, you're still going to get the same feeling, you know, because it's the same ink that's in them or paint. It's just in a smaller nib size, but you can still fill in areas and you're still going to get that nice same flat finish. It's just going to be on a slightly smaller scale. So if we look at the nib, sizes versus the line widths as well so we'll take this one and you can see the shape of the the shape of the nibs on these they are quite flat on the bottom so if I use this straight up and down so right on the tip of the marker and I make a line that's what I would say is like your standard line width but if I turn it right on its side you can get a slightly thicker line and it also as well with pressure, if you've got a slightly lighter pressure, you can get a thinner line again. So that's just about playing about with them. And if you want to use variation in line width as you know part of your artwork, then you can do it with these, which is great. So if we take the 3M now, and if I just do the same thing and show you what you're what you're dealing with. That was a bit wobbly, but you get the idea. So again, you've got the same thing and they're significantly narrower, obviously, than the, than the 5 M's. We, we're nearly dry. We're not quite dry. We're almost there. Absolutely grand. So we've got quite a lot of room for manoeuvre here. We've got quite a lot of scope. We've got a nice range of supplies that are all high quality, which is always the main thing for me. I would rather have less of something that is very good quality than, an, you know, a plethora of items that are, you know borderline or a bit dodgy <laughs> but these are all really established brands with really good products so yeah right that's us we're dry now I can touch that nothing's coming off in my finger and this is what I was talking about about really flat color it's amazing if you have a little streaks here and there you can use subsequent layers that's not a problem but one of the things when we're talking about opacity is I wanted to show you this white pen so if I just show you here on this one because it's dry but if I put a layer of white over the top of this you can see it's coping with that no problem. Now, what I tend to find is as it dries, it becomes slightly more transparent. So if you're wanting a really solid, opaque block, I would do two layers, but you can layer these up no problems and all the colours will go on top of each other. You know, they're kind of interchangeable. So if I use that one on there... I do find if they are the very dark colours, so say for example a really dark purple, as with the white, sometimes I find you have to go and put another layer back on top. But if you're using good quality paper, that is absolutely not a problem. The last thing I want to try is something that I've never done with Poscas and that's watering them down. So I'm just going to grab a water brush here. These are uh, the Zig H2 water brushes. I, I swear by these. These are my favourite. I have had these for years and they're still as good as the day I bought them. So I'm just going to make sure I've got enough water flow going first of all. So I'm assuming that we want to do this while the paint is wet. So I'm going to do two patches here and I'm going to let one dry. And I'm going to work with one while it's wet. Okay, so we can really pull that out. And obviously because it's water based, it is going to, you know, it's going to dilute out. 
Again, I don't know how much you would maybe want to use this on marker paper, but this is thick marker paper, so it will take some water without too much warping. So that could be something that I actually might use for the scroller challenge, which by the way is going to be in a separate video, but it's going to be Thursday's video. So the next video that's up on the cave will, will be the scroller challenge, just because the box was so late. So you don't have too long to wait. But this is a technique that I might employ just because I tend to like desaturated colours and I like that sort of more wishy-washy, squishy rather than this very bold, illustrative style. I might even combine the two just for fun, why not? That's actually very nice, it's very delicate and I think you could get some really nice effects with that. Right, this is dry. Now it's supposed to be permanent when it's dry, did we not say that? Uh -huh. That's not waterproof when it's dry. Maybe you have to leave it to dry for a long time. I don't know about that. If anybody knows about that, feel free to drop me a comment down below. But yeah, that, like, that's got some mileage in it. Look, whoa. Oh, this is going to be fun. I am totally into this box. <laughs> I like this a lot. This is good fun. So, lovely set of supplies. I just want to check that the fine liner is going to go over this paint no problem. If we wanted to put in some hatching. Yes, yes, yes. Everything's wonderful. It's also going over the, the graphite fine, which is more carbon than graphite, as discussed. And uh, I would assume that the, the diluted versions will be no different once they're dry too. So the last thing I want to look at is just how well this paper's held up to all this. If I just turn it over, if I tilt it, there's a little bit of puckering. And it's just a, it's a few tiny pockets. And it's where I've laid down either a lot of marker, so these ones a little bit and where uh, I just use the water brush there. But you're not gonna be using these double-sided, so it doesn't matter, but there is absolutely zero warping, like there's there's just nothing. So that that is a testament to the paper, and as I say, I'm, I use Art Gecko paper anyway, so I was, I was confident in it, and I'm glad that the, my confidence has come to fruition. <laughs> All right, so that is our scrawler box for the month. We have our scrawler zine for a little bit of extra curricular reading. We've got our featured artwork by SP0, which I am very much in love with, our drumstick bar. We have not one, not two, but three 5M Posca pens in rather attractive pastel colours, and we also have two 3Ms, one in black and one in white, to help us along our way, as well as our Mars Lumograph black 2B pencil, which I'm very excited about, and this very nice fine liner as well. We have our Art Gecko paper, which is getting a super duper triple thumbs up from me if I had three thumbs, because it is very, very nice indeed. And lastly, we've got our list of supplies. I don't know where our sticker's going. There's a sticker somewhere. List of supplies with our scroller challenge, of course, which we are going to need for Thursday, and it is character creation. I'd love to know your thoughts on this box, or if you have any other thoughts in general, and I shall see you back in the cave on Thursday for the scroller challenge. So have a good day, everyone. Please be careful, be safe, look after each other. Bye for now.